Hey folks, today I'm going to be reviewing the light bar switch install for 2019 Silverado. We'll talk about the wiring, talk about the uh, control module that I got. It's this pretty cool little gizmo here. I got it off of Amazon. Um, there's several different brands available. They all appear pretty much the same. Um, but the neat thing about them is it allows you to run one wire to the uh, battery, one to the accessory on the truck, and then you plug in all of your, all of your accessory light components to that uh, light bar control module. Um, on the Let's see here, I've got some light bars. These are relatively cheapo lights made by Nylite, um, but so they're pretty doggone bright, honestly. You'll have to excuse the spider webs. My daughter decided to do that for Halloween. And then on the front here, I've got some installed in the grill. These came from Rough Country. Since this is an LTZ, I had to buy a new grill also to put those in. Um, an LT grill because they don't fit on the LTZ grill, but um, that's a whole different story for another day. But um, what I wanted to talk about, what I wanted to talk about specifically was how to get all the wires into the cab. So if you can see down here on the left side, there's this rubber boot um, and then there's a little nub that comes off of it. Well, that little rubber nub has a little cover on it and you can slice the cover off the end and it gives you a great spot to slide the wires in. Now I wouldn't slice the whole thing off, leave it relatively long, because when I'm done here, I'm gonna zip tie all that closed and probably slather some silicone on there. And then it comes out nice and clean. You can see my yellow wire I ran through there. That's my accessory power. And that black guy right there is the control module cord that goes to the uh, controller. So over here we have the power controller. Um, for the uh, the light bar, I already got it mounted. You can see it kind of sits here. The problem I have though is this tape that it comes with is total junk, but I'm not gonna let that worry me too much. It's pretty easy to buy some tape aftermarket. I can go to AutoZone and pick some up or Harbor Freight or wherever they sell it and mount it. But the great thing is it fits right there very well in this area on the truck. Another nice thing is here under the dash, you can see I've got the plug. And all it does is just run up there and I've got it tied off here to the air conditioner um, vents that go under the dash, the heated floors, and it just runs across there. Oh, excuse me. Um, here, I have the center console. If you don't have a center console, it might be easier, but with the center console, you can see the wire running through there. It still wasn't that hard. All you need is a fish tape and push it through and um, then pull it from the other side. And you can see the wire here um, that it goes to. I just ran through the, the uh, steering wheel boot. Well, not even a boot. It's just really a gasket. Um, and it all sits in there kind of nice and clean where you don't really see any wires when you're done. Now, the other problem you got to figure out is how do you get accessory power to where it's just running on the battery whenever you, you don't want it running all the time. Could have set it. So the other thing you got to figure out is how to get accessory power to it. You don't want it running all the time. Um, to be powered in case you leave the leave one turned on when you walk away and you don't necessarily want it wired so it's connected to the running vehicle um, because then you can't use the light bars if you go park somewhere you want it really gone to the retained accessory power so looking through the manual in the uh, in the vehicle we see here on the side the passenger side fuse panel of the vehicle we start looking through the book and we find here this number 27 and 28 accessory power outlet retained and accessory power outlet battery. And when you look on the diagram, you end up, let's see right here, F27, F28. But when you go there, you'll notice that it's not exactly the same. This uh, F27 and F28 kind of, this one scooted over into that position, but what it left was a really nice little pin there if you can see where I can slide on an auxiliary jack into it and voila, you've got accessory power. So here when I hit accessory, fire this sucker up, my lights come on instantly. My light bar, I hit the control module, it lights up and there we go. So that's simple. And so this is really cool too. It comes with all the different stickers to label it whatever you want. Um, and it's auto dimming. So when it gets dark, it, uh, I haven't tried it yet, but it's supposed to dim down. So it's not so bright. Um, you can get this in blue or green or red. I think I picked the blue one to kind of match this, this truck's layout a little bit better. Um, with the stickers, you can see here, 
view some of them so far, um, but it comes with pretty much everything you need um, to cover uh, pretty much any possibility you come up with. Let me stop that dinging. And All right, so now to talk about the control module itself and the wiring. So I took everything apart in here and did a lot to clean up the wiring. Um, got it all routed to where it's relatively um, nice and clean in here. Um, zip tied everything up. You can see my red ones come through. I'm um, sorry, my yellow and my, my control module come through right right through that boot right there. And here's the bundle of all the wires that I got coming from the light bars. I wrapped them here, tied them off so they wouldn't make contact inadvertently with the negative terminals of the battery. And uh, this is the battery with the cover popped off. The super cool thing about this new setup is there's actually blank terminals there where you can bolt auxiliary power sources on. So I just got this nut here um, loose, but when we get to it, the main power plug-in from this gizmo will bolt right onto there without trouble. Now this is the control unit itself, and the control unit will simply screw into the um, mating jack that comes off of what we just ran under the dash and then each um, one two three four five six lugs and you just screw in your power uh, line to the lights and everything else is pretty much automatic from there so what I'm struggling with here is trying to figure out where to mount this gizmo that's going to be in a relatively out of the way place and under the hood there's a lot of stuff going on but down here um, over the passenger side fender well there's a pretty nice area location here and so I've loosened this screw um, I don't know what it goes to exactly but it seems like a good candidate and what I'm going to work on is mounting this guy down there onto that screw um, getting at least the top end bolted down and then probably the bottom one I'll just zip tie off to one of the brackets there and that should hold it nice and tight so Give me a second to work on that and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back and I've got it mounted um, nice and clean. You can see um, the top part is bolted on there. The bottom has a bit of a zip tie on it, but um, it's just gonna do it. The cover will actually go on nice and easy clearance for that. Um, the problem I'm running into though is that to put this in there, I'm going to need a very short screwdriver. Um, so perhaps I should have done this afterward, uh, put all the wires in and then mounted it. So we're going to try that. And again, we'll be right back. Okay, that worked out pretty good. Now we got the wires mounted in there. We got it bolted off to the truck. It's got just enough threads biting on the back to hold it. And now to deal with my grounds. All right, let's see. We're back in business. We got all the power connected. We've got the uh, main uh, connection to the control module done. We got the grounds done. I did it with the bolt right above it. Uh, this is kind of janky. Um, I ran out of the little clip things to put on the end, so I'm gonna have to go back and do that. I've got my power. Uh, mounted, routed it. You gotta get creative with the power. There's no um, right or wrong way to do this. But I just like to get things, you know, make sure you're not up against some hot component or some cold component that's gonna otherwise damage your wire, get it caught in a fan or anything like that. But that's about it for the install. Um, we've got a little bit of cleanup to do here and then um, hopefully show you all the finished product. All right, guys, so this is it, all buttoned up, cover back on. You can see my power wire running out here and all nice and tidy in this little fender well here, all the wires. And I don't know if you can see, but way back there where that boot goes through, I've got two, two zip ties on it um, to keep it all nice and tight and waterproof. And I guess overall I call this success, except I lost my 12 millimeter socket, having a little bit of a panic attack over that, but other than that, we're gonna call this good. Thanks. All right, so this is kind of cool. 
So I found some tape, got them mounted properly, and pulling into the garage here into the darker area, and you can see they auto dim as I pull in. So that's really nice. Um, hopefully these work out good. I really like this thing so far. And um, now I gotta figure out what else to go buy to fill out the other three spots on it. All right, thanks for watching.